Acts chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost, a Jewish holiday, was fully come, then there, uh, they were with one accord in one place, unity among the brethren. This is after Jesus has risen from the risen from the grave, after he's ascended uh, into the right hand of the Father. He has sent the apostles out. They're together, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as a rushing of mighty wind. You find that in John chapter three, Jesus speaks of the Spirit as wind, and filled all the house where they were sitting. I mean, was there a breeze through the place? Could you feel the wind? And there appeared unto them cloven tongues. It split. Cloven uh, paws of certain animals. A split hoof. Cloven tongues. The tongues, uh, it's a forked tongue. It's a tongue split in half. Like as fire. And it sat upon each of them. But tongues we're going to see is a language. What is the picture of this thing that you can draw? It's not what you find in some churches. A cloven language. As of fire. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them, so other they. So I guess there were more than one speaking. And this is speaking of tongues by the Holy Ghost. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem. Jerusalem. City of the Jews. They were dwelling at Jerusalem. Jews. By the way, do you know something at the Pentecost? That was the only feast that you could bring leavened bread. So we're starting something new in the book of Acts. It just came to, came to my head now. The Pentecost was, was, there was a part of leavened bread you can bring in. And we're going to see some Gentiles here. But Jews, devout men, so these men are serious about God. They're serious about the Lord Jesus Christ. They're serious about the Holy Spirit. These are not agnostics. These are not uh, atheists. They are men who are out of every nation under heaven gathered together. There's a, there's a uh, dispersion among the land of Jews. They're all over Asia. They're all over Africa. They're just all over. And they gather all together like the law said on the Pentecost. It's one to three times of the year. And you're to be there, all the males. Well, here they are. And they're not going to get the Old Testament. They're going to get the beginnings of the New Testament. Now, when there was noise about people talking, flapping the guns, flapping the tongues, you wouldn't believe what I heard. You hear what I heard? And the multitude came together. There's a multitude again. Jesus had multitudes following him. And were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. That's what tongues is. It's a language. It's not a hippie jibber jabba jubba gaku. If I were to speak a tongue, according to the Bible, it just said here, it'd be French, Spanish, Polish, Italian. And these men did not have to press one to understand, or three for Hebrew, whatever it is. These group of people have gathered all over the world, are in this assembly, in this multitude, and wherever they're coming from, there are men that are speaking their language. And the sign from the Holy Spirit is probably, these guys probably never spoke that language before. It'd be like, well, it's not a means to start speaking Spanish. Or even worse, you pick, you pick the hardest dialect you can say in Africa, and I start speaking that. That would be a true sign from the Holy Spirit. And they were all amazed and marveled, said one to another, Behold! Are not all these which speak Galilean, Jewish area up north, Peter, James, John, Andrew, on the Sea of Galilee, fishermen? And then when Peter was confronted about denying Jesus Christ, thy speech bewraileth thee. 
You Galileans don't know any languages. And there's a part in Acts we're going to read a little bit later, I think two or three. They're going to say, well, who do you people think you are? You're, you're from an uneducated area. Galilee had to have been a, a noted for dumb people. The way the book of Acts is written. These guys don't speak a language. Later on, these guys don't know nothing. They're just fishermen. What about Matthew? What about Luke, the medical doctor? What about them? And here we go with a list of people from all over the world, Parthians and Medes. Ooh, Daniel. And Emlims and dwellers of Mesopotamia. And in Judea, north, uh, south of Israel. And Cappadocia, well, Pontius. That's where Pontius Pilate was in charge. Asia. Now, Asia here would not be where you think India and all that. That would somehow it's it's Turkey. I don't know why that's considered Asia. Pergama, Pamphylia, Egypt. God told those Jews over and over and over, don't go to Egypt. There are Jews from Egypt here in the land. And parts of Libya, that's another African nation. About Cyrene and strangers of Rome, there's some Gentiles. Jews, got to get the Jews in there. And apostolites. That Ethiopian eunuch was apostolite. He was a Gentile who had converted to Judaism. Searching out God Jehovah. Cretes and Arabians. Ishmael. Gentile. Kind of half Gentile. He's of Abraham. And do hear them speak. And notice how the Arabians come last in the list. We do hear them speak in our tongues. Not no unknown tongue. There is no unknown tongue in the Bible. It's these people saying, you know what? We hear our language. The wonderful works of God. What's the wonderful works? Well, Peter's going to say it in 22 and 23 and 24. It's the gospel that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and arose again. They're telling stories of the gospels that have not been written yet. I mean, Peter would probably, hey, there was a time I went fishing for tax money. James and John, yeah, there was a time that we asked Jesus, could we sit in the right hand and the left hand? Man, you should have saw that time that Jesus fed all those people with, with, with seven loaves of bread and two fish. You won't believe what Judas did. You know where Jesus slept? Did I tell you about the time that Jesus slept on the back of a boat? Wonderful works. All that Jesus, he calmed the storm. That was a wonderful work. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what mean is this? What's going on here? Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. They're joking, new wine. It's not real drink. It's grape juice. You guys are getting drunk on grape juice. They're mockers. These are people that come up to you trying to witness. They mock you. I can think of a few of them. But Peter, standing up with the 11, 12. Matthias, chapter 1, is among the 11. 12. Peter and 11 make 12. There's 12 apostles here. Now, Peter is going to use his first key that Jesus said, these, I'm going to give you the keys. Now, these keys are not to heaven. These keys are not to hell. These keys are to the Jewish people here. And in chapter 10 of Acts, to the Gentile people. He's going to open the door of the gospel. We're going to see in a minute. To the Israelites and to the Gentiles. That's all those keys are. And Peter gets to do it. The outspoken one gets up and he's going to start speaking. And he's going to speak by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost now. He's not going to put his foot in his mouth no more. Feed the sheep. Here he goes. Here he goes. And who are the sheep in, in John chapter 10? The sheep, the Jews. And he said, and later on, John, I have other sheep. Acts chapter 10. Lift up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all that dwell at Jerusalem, just in case you didn't get it, be this known unto you, church, no. And hearken to my words. This is kind of funny for a guy that said, I don't know. No, I don't know. I don't know. Jesus, 
I love you. Feed my lambs. You know I love you, Jesus. Feed my sheep. For these are not drunken, as you suppose. So maybe the tongues have some kind of effect that makes you think you're drunk. Or they're just really just bashing them. Seeing it is but the third hour of the day, respectful, was about 9 a.m. It was respectful that no man got drunk at 9 a.m. Boy, have times changed. Bars are open all the time. Packet stores are open anytime. You can buy beer down here in Florida anytime. Back where I come from, and after 8 o'clock, they pull the curtain down. You can't sell it no more. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel in the Old Testament, a Jewish prophet to the Jewish people. Have you got the flavor yet? What kind of stew is this? Irish. No. Well, church. No. And it shall come to pass in the last days with God. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons, Jewish. Your daughters, Jewish, shall prophesy. Tell the future. And your... Oh, that's why people want to run to Acts. See, we can prophesy. We can tell what's going on. We can tell you when earthquakes are going to happen. We can tell you. And your young men, Jewish, shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. Israel is given another chance for Jesus. By Peter's preaching. And on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, foretold from God. Probably at 144,000. Because watch, I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Definitely in the book of Revelation, definitely in the tribulation period. That's not the church age. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. All these blood moons, all these different kinds of moons that the church runs through, here we are. It can't be. Because if next month that moon that's going to be full is a representation of Jesus Christ coming, where is the seven-year tribulation period? If that moon is going to say that Jesus is now coming the second advent, you must be saying we're in the tribulation period now. Before that great and notable day of the Lord come. Or you don't understand what the great and notable day of the Lord is. You may think that's the rapture. That is not the rapture. Because I'll tell you, at this great and notable day when the Lord comes, I will be saddled upon a horse behind Jesus Christ. I won't be raptured. I'll be coming back with him. You got your days confused or you haven't got your Bible understood. Be careful running in Acts chapter 2. It shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel. Is there enough flavor in this stew? This stew is 100% kosher. Acts chapter 2. There's no bacon. There's no leaven. Even though we do got some... Romans, but it's flavored. Peter is preaching to the Jews. How do I know? Peter, I want you to eat that. Uh, oh, Lord, it's unclean. I have not touched anything unclean in my lips. Never. When Peter was told to go to the Gentiles, he told God, absolutely not. That's how you know this is Jewish. Peter does not give God any attitude here. Because he's preaching to his people. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth. There, there's another. Jewish city. A man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs. Everything Jesus has done. And John said we could even write everything that he has done. Has ever done. Which God did by him in the midst of you in Israel. Yeah, he went to Samaria a couple times, but he, his, most of his ministry was in Israel. As yourselves also know. You people know what he did. You saw it. You're witnesses too. Him being delivered by the determined counsel and foreknowledge of God. God knew that Jesus was going to go on that cross. God knew all those miracles set by Jesus. 
God knew what Pilate would do. God knew what Judas would do. God knew what Zacharias would do. God knew what John the Baptist would do. God knew what Peter would do. I mean, he said, Peter, you, you're going to deny me. No, not me, Lord. Oh, yes, you are. No, not me. I don't know. And ye, <coughs> men of Israel, Jews, Jerusalem, Nazareth, and ye, and ye, have taken and by wicked hands had crucified and slain. Peter's telling those Jews, you killed Jesus. Black and white. That Jewish lamb, the lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Who had to kill that lamb? That lamb kill itself? Absolutely not. The Jewish people had to kill that lamb. The Egyptians didn't kill it. And that high priest was set in every Passover since then, he was sent to take care of that lamb. They deserved that lamb. They deserved that lamb. John said that seven days they deserved that lamb. And Pilate said, I find no fault in him. That lamb is perfect. So the, the question is, who killed Jesus? Yeah, Jesus is God, but Peter said, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, you killed him. You had him crucified and slain. Slain means killed. Go back to Old Testament. Read where it says slain. That was killed. Whom God has raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding of him. Now look what we got here. We got the death. And we got the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In the middle, we know there's a burial. Peter is preaching the gospel. In Acts chapter 2. We run to Acts 2, 38, repent and be baptized. But before that happens, before that becomes, he preaches to these Jews the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The gospel before the baptism. Oh, that's not mentioned. We just go right to be baptized. You can't be baptized unless you get the gospel. These men heard the gospel, and they're going to respond in 38. But they've heard the gospel, 23 and 24. For David, Jewish king, approved by God, the first real king of Israel. The Messiah prince in the, in the, in the millennium. This is no Gentile. Speaketh concerning him. I foresaw the Lord always before my face. And he is on my right hand. That's where Jesus is, at the right hand of the Father right now. Even as Peter's preaching. Peter believed Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. He believes in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. For with the heart man believes on the righteousness, with the mouth confession. There it is right there. There's no mistake in salvation. It's got to come from the heart, and it's got to come out with the mouth. There's no... Acts chapter 2 matches Romans chapter 10. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. We're speaking about Jesus. Jesus went into hell. That's what Peter just said. My Savior died on the cross and his soul went down into hell and deposited my sins. Neither will thou suffer thy Holy One, Jesus, to see corruption. Martha said, it's four days. He stinketh. Jesus had no time to be corrupted in that body. He did not begin to decompose. He did not begin to have the, the, the little bugs and all the stuff that happens with the dead body. He arose from that grave before that corruption even started. He arose from that grave before that body began to stink. He arose from that grave in victorious. Dead did not have a hold on him. Couldn't keep him. Death could not feed on him. You know, if I died today and the Lord tarried, this body will start decomposing. Jesus' body never did. It's alive and well. He said, Thomas, reach in that finger. He did, and Thomas didn't go, ew. He grew, you know, he wasn't a zombie. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy in thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. 
So when those people rose from the grave, according to Peter, some did not come up. Looks like David's still in the grave. I don't know. I don't understand that verse. His there, but maybe his bones are. I mean, that's true, too. We don't know. I mean, what Peter just stands up and says, his sepulchre, here's his grave. Therefore, being a prophet, David was a prophet and a king and a priest. How do you know he was a priest? Because he was allowed to eat the showbread. Anybody who touched that showbread wasn't supposed to. God, look what God did to, uh, to um, Aaron's boys for bringing strange fire in. Fry them right up. Knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. So Matthew and Luke give you the genealogy of David's loins. Jesus Christ came of David. Two different boys, Nathan and Solomon, but they still came from David. And Jesus will sit on David's throne, and that was in Luke chapter 3 and Matthew chapter 1. He seen this before spank of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption, though David said Jesus went into hell. So let me ask you a question. Jesus said it would be his three days and three nights as what prophet in the Bible? Jonah. So why do people say Jonah did not die and Jonah did not go into hell when Jesus did, according to David? David knew more about Jonah and he never met Jonah. More than Bible scholars. Jonah died and went into hell. Jesus died and went into hell. Where the gates Jonah spoke about. And Jesus grabbed the keys to death and hell. Not Peter. Thus Jesus had got this Jesus has God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Look at everybody in this room, you saw Jesus, didn't you? What is Peter teaching that people are missing in Acts chapter 2? He's preaching the resurrected Savior. We saw him. There he was. Thomas, what did you do? I denied him. What, 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 no, Thomas. What, what did you do? I put my finger in his hole. Yeah. What did Jesus tell you, Thomas? He said, Blessed are thou that have seen, but blessed are they that have not seen and believe. And he's speaking to an entire room and said, Guess what? All you people, you saw Jesus. So this was before Jesus ascended to the Father. These people saw him. This message after Jesus resurrected the Father, he's talking to people that before Acts chapter 1. These are among the 400, if not more. Therefore being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, that's what he told him in John, he has showed forth this, which you now see and hear. The Holy Ghost has come. The sign. And David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, the Lord, the Lord said to my Lord, sit thou on my right hand, God speaking to Jesus, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know with surely that which God has made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, are you beyond the shadow of a doubt? Who killed him? There you go. Scripture. Both Lord and Christ. Read that to a Jehovah Witness. I'm just going to pass on it. That's God. That's the Christ. That's the Messiah. That's Jehovah, Peter just said. Jesus is the Messiah and Jesus is God. End of history. End of story. Signed, sealed, delivered. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not ever pass away. This will be forever written. That's Jehovah, and that's the Messiah. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in the heart. They were convinced. 
and said unto Peter, and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Now this is a different story from Acts 16.30 and 31. Because Acts 16.31 later is going to say, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. But then Peter said unto them, Who? 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 Who's been? Who are the them? Who are these people? The Jews. Repent. You got to get that one. Did you get that? Even in Acts 2.38, you got to repent. Peter has preached the death and he's preached the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What do you got to do? Repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins. I don't see no blood here mentioned. Peter hasn't got the blood yet. Blood is missing out of Acts 2.38. You know what the church age, if you don't have blood, you know what you don't have? You don't have salvation. That's a revelation by Paul. But this is the early church. Jesus is just <coughs> Jesus just ascended to heaven. The apostles are now on their own. And Peter gets up and says, You gotta you gotta hear the gospel, you gotta hear the resurrection, you must repent and be baptized. That's what John was preaching. Peter is doing John's baptism. Because there's been no new revelation yet. He's doing what John has done. He's preaching repentance and he's preaching the baptism. That is not us. John was not called to the Gentiles. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The gift of the Holy Ghost. I get the Holy Ghost by belief on Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. And by that, I am adopted by God the Father as his Son. The gift today of God is Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost comes by believing on Jesus Christ as my Savior. For the promise is unto you, Jews, to your children, Jews. And to all that are far off, Jews, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, wait a minute, there were other words that, Jesus, that Peter preached? Where are they? So we even see John. John, John told us we can't write everything. Luke's telling us, I can't write everything that Peter said that afternoon. It's just too much. You got religions that are stuck in Acts 2.38. Never mind going any further. That might mess them up totally. And what Luke writes to us in Acts chapter 1 is, do you get the main fact? It's Jewish. 100% Jewish. Get that. Never mind else what Peter said. Get Jewish. He testified to Zort, saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Tribulation period. He just spoke to the prophet of Joel. He's warning them about the tribulation. Then they that were gladly received his word. Received the word. What was the word? He died. He was buried. He arose again. That's the word. They repented. Were baptized. And the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And don't you see the churches grabbing that one? Repent and be baptized. And, you know, we got 400 people saved in this town. We got 500 saved last week. It's not our salvation. And they continue steadfast in the apostles' doctrine. Apostles' doctrine, what's the problem here? There's no New Testament written yet. Remember Jesus said, who sins you remain, I'll remain, and who sins, you know, you retain, you retain. That's the apostles' doctrine. These guys now, these 12 men, they're in charge. With authority of the Holy Ghost in Jesus Christ, these men are in charge until the full scriptures are written. And fellowship, and breaking of bread, and prayers. There's no world. 
They're not inviting the world in. They're not inviting the unsaved into their group. I guarantee. Can you see Peter inviting people from the world into the church? I told not. And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1.22 says, Jews require a sign. It's always about Jews. You know why people are not getting saved today? Because there's no fear. And they got bumper stickers for it. They don't fear God, so why get saved? They don't, feel, they don't fear hell, so why get saved? And all that believed were, were together and had all things common. Look at that. That would be a glorious church. Unity. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. Why? Because if a Jew trusted Christ as his Savior in Israel, he has no more life. He has no more business. He has no more job. He does not have a family no more. We got to sell it all and get together and stick together. Remember, the priests are still running around. They probably got wanted uh, posters right now. You catch a Christian, or well, they're not called Christians yet. You catch a follower of Jesus. You let us know. We'll put them on a cross just like we did Jesus. And they continually daily with one accord in the temple. Well, yeah, they're showing up at the temple. They would have been cast out of the temple. They would have been rejected of the temple. They would be rejected of the service, but there they are. We don't meet in a temple. The temple is gone. The dumb of the rock is there. So say in Acts chapter 2, the church is to follow. There is no temple to go to. So what did they do? Some people call their church the temple. Bible Baptist temple, uh, St. Louis temple, and whatever kind of temple. That's not church. That's Jewish. And breaking bread from house to house. They'd eat their meat. With gladness and singles of heart, unity among the brethren. They fed each other, they took care of each other. Praising God and having favor with all the people. People liked them. People enjoyed them. They were a good testimony. They were honest people. They were respected of the people. Try that today. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. So it's a church. They're just not the New Testament church by the blood yet. The gospel, but it's all Jewish.